Hey, what's going on everybody? And a warm welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we asked the question, can this cheap, inexpensive, and easy to find whiskey beat out the longtime favorite Eagle Rare in a blind battle? You know the drill, run that video. All right then, folks, before we get into today's video, don't forget to go and check us out over on our website, thewhiskeycove.square.site. And also, as I'll go check us out on Patreon. We're relatively new there. Some really awesome perks for the channel, some interactive stuff as well. That's just a really great way to support the channel here as well. So as you can see, we have two bottles, two bourbons in front of us here. And I have a bit of a hypothesis about Pipe Dream. It's been a while since I've tried Redwood Pipe Dream. It's probably been about 18 months. I haven't also tried Eagle Rare for a long time. I just remember this being excellent. And I think this, this is a much more affordable, affordable, and better whiskey than Eagle Rare Tanner. We should stop sleeping on this one. That's my hypothesis. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna get this juice open because these are two brand new bottles. We're gonna get them into the glasses and then we're gonna get them mixed up for us. And then we're gonna taste them blind and see what the difference will be between the two. I can't rem remember the nuances between these whiskeys. Obviously I might, I may pick up some Buffalo Trace notes from the Eagle Rare, but I guess we'll just wait and see. Eagle Rare's come back here with a 10 year age statement. It went away for a little bit of a while there because they couldn't guarantee the full 10 years with Eagle Rare. So, and then with the Redwood Pipe Dream, it is at least four years old. And the mash bill for this is undisclosed. It's one of the Buff Buffalo Trace undisclosed mash bills. And for the Pipe Dream, I have the mash bill. It's not on the back of this bowl, but it's on the back of the Cast Strength Pipe Dream. And that is 74% corn, 20% rye, 4.5% malted barley, and 1.5% wheat. So, let's get these whiskeys cracked, let's get them into glasses, let's get them mixed up, and let's get on with the blind. How's the Coke pop? It's a pretty good one right there. And how's the Eagle Red Coke pop? Lacking a little bit, and a little bit splashy as well. Let's see if we can get these right here. All right then folks, we have the bourbon in the glasses and I have no idea which one's which. And for you folks at home, we're gonna just call this one and we're gonna call this two. I've been told, but they've been lettered A and B. And again, I don't know which is which, so we'll find out with the answer key in my pocket at the end. So we'll start with your left and then we'll move to your right. So we'll start with glass one here. Just looking at the glass there, it does look a little bit thin, but there is a slight kind of film in the glass there as well. Color-wise, we're thinking pretty amberish from where I'm standing here, because I'm looking straight through the whiskey into a light, just how, how I have my lights facing. So maybe how it looks to me might be a little bit different to how it looks to you, because when I put it back here, it definitely looks a little bit darker. But it is quite dark behind me anyway. So just looking here, it looks kind of like a golden hay kind of color. Maybe a touch of like amber there as well. Maybe like a light honey, I guess, there. Let's go in for a nose in this one, glass one. So straight off the bat, you definitely just get classic bourbon notes screaming out of the glass. You get rich, deep vanilla. You get some like brown sugar there as well. And there's definitely a really nice wood presence running through the whole thing. I'm getting a, maybe like a touch of like a black currant actually, which is not a note I normally get from too much whiskies. But I'm definitely getting like a black currant or, or a blackberry from this. Black currants tend to be a little bit tartar. Not saying the whiskey's tart, but it's it's definitely kind of one of those type notes without the tartness. And it's a really nice, complex sweetness running through this whole glass here. Again, you're getting that brown sugar. It's not like deep, dark, burnt or caramelized but it's definitely, it's definitely like when you open a bag of brown sugar and you take like an initial nose. It's kind of similar to that. Or maybe a touch of wheat running through this as well. I don't know if that's a bit of a tell, but I guess we'll wait and see. Excellent nose to start off here. Let's go in for a taste, this is glass one. So initial taste, you get this warm caramel sweetness straight off the bat there, and then you get like a like a peppercorn note on the tongue there and you do get some spice there's a little bit of rice spice definitely in this as well you kind of have like a like darker seedier rice spice note it's not too overpowering but it's definitely there as well the wood is coming through it's not quite like a a musty oak it's more kind of like maybe like a walnut kind of like a 
an older aged walnut note and you're definitely getting towards the back end some more spice because you get the spice right on the front it kind of tails off throughout the body but it definitely props up towards the back end there it's tasting more of maybe like a like a like a like a cinnamon spice maybe or something in the bacon spice family let's go in for another taste here the more and more i drink glass one the the less sweetness that i'm getting and this is more of like a woodier a woodier vanilla bourbon which is really nice i don't get much abv or heat in this whatsoever the abv on eagle rare is 45 percent and i believe it's the same yeah 45 percent on the Redwood Empire Pipe Dream, which is what makes this a really good matchup. So talking about the finish here on glass one, it's quite a, I would say like a medium finish. It doesn't fall flat at all. It's got a really nice like rounded note out where you get kind of that spice at the back end there. And you do that wood, that kind of walnut wood definitely does carry through it as well. There's not too much, or I'm not really picking up any fruit on, uh, on the taste or on the palate that was more through on the nose like i said this is more like a vanilla -y or woodier bourbon so that was glass one a really an excellent start so far let me just cleanse let me just cleanse my palate and then we can move into glass two here so then glass two again this actually looks a little bit more thinner in the glass it's not really sticking or there's no real fil film on the glass there it's, you, you see the initial roll, but then it kind of dissipates straight away. Uh, consistency, again, looks quite thin in the glass. Potentially the same color, maybe a touch darker than glass one. Who knows what that might represent. But all in all, let's get into the nose. I will say, our initial thoughts with the nose on this one is that it's a lot more sweeter than glass one. It doesn't nose too heavy on the wood notes, or at least they're not coming through quite yet. This is definitely getting like an ice cream vanilla note more so on this one. That's kind of like a deeper vanilla, like a vanilla pod on the first one. It's interesting. I, I don't remember any of these two whiskeys being this sweet on the nose. This kind of like, uh, I, like fresh churned ice cream. Let's go in for another nose here. There's just caramel for days on this one. It almost smells like a toasted whiskey up against this. Maybe a touch of marshmallow. I'm not getting any cherry on this. Not that I was getting any cherry on the first one, but usually, sometimes I get cherry from Buffalo Trace products. There's no heat on the nose here. It's very inviting, but very different from glass one. Maybe some apple there as well. Maybe like a sweeter, like a Fiji or like a, um, like a delicious apple. But again, yeah, not, not too much wood on the nose. There's a little bit there. There's a little bit of oak there, but uh, you know, not nearly as much as glass one. So let's go into glass two and let's go for a taste here. So the palate on glass two, definitely that sweetness definitely carries through to the palate right on the front there as well and it carries right the way through towards the back not getting that much spice on this one again there's a little bit of wood creeping up and carries all the way through in terms of can kind of, if there's any spice or heat there's not really any spice or heat at all on my palate it's a very easy drinking bourbon there's nothing offensive in the flavor there's nothing too spiky it's just more of like a sweeter experience and i'm definitely also getting that, that vanilla ice cream note it's very kind of i don't want to say milky but it's very vanilla beany and very effervescent so let's go in for another taste here so in terms of mouthfeel on glass two even though it looked quite thin in the glass it's definitely very oily on the palate. You might be able to hear that come through to the video as kind of like my, my mouth is going away there. But it's definitely very well balanced. It, like I said, it doesn't have too much wood there as well. It's more of a sweeter bourbon. And then you do get a touch of oak that carries through. In terms of the finish, it's not as long as glass one. It kind of rounds out really nicely. The, like I said, the sweetness carries through and kind of rounds out and then doesn't quite fall off, but it just leaves your mouth really nice and oily and kind of leaves you wanting more so so far between these two whiskies i was expecting them to share more similarities than what i'm getting so glass one tends to lean more in like a 
I wouldn't say spicier because it isn't spicy too much, but it leans more in like a, a classic wood, vanilla, bourbon with a touch of spice type area, where glass two goes off into this like sweet ice cream uh, with a touch of wood and then maybe like a little bit of leather there as well. Not really picking too much fruits up on this one, like I said, maybe like a touch of apple, but uh, all in all, somewhat different whiskeys, but two impressive whiskeys. So what we'll do is we'll pause the camera. I'm gonna taste back through these and then we'll come back with an order. All right then folks, and we are back. And by the way, these bottles on this side, they mean nothing. I just put them at the start before my wife mixed them up there. So we do have them in an order. So because there's only two, let's find out what that order is. So the first glass, and I must say, before I go into the ratings actually, that this was so close. This was really, 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 really close. I wouldn't say that it could go a different way on a different day. I do think that if I were to drink these 10 times in a row and try to give them scores, I pro this would probably get eight and this would probably get two. So ultimately this is today's victor, but it definitely was very difficult and very close because they're quite different in, in the bourbons that they are. Like I said, more drier, more wood notes, some vanillas, but not like a sweeter vanilla and a little bit of a berry note. And then with glass one was like this beautiful, sweet, caram rich caramel with a touch of apple. Think like a uh, like a caramel apple or toffee apple that you get at a fair. Kind of had that vibe going on. And then you did get a touch of wood and then the finish just kind of was like left you wanting more. But what really won it for this glass or glass two is that, I guess I just give it away the answer, right? But what really won it for glass two is the mouthfeel and just the oiliness. It was just more polished and more balanced altogether. I think that if folks at home were to try these two whiskeys, depending on what your palate, you could just go either way. I'm not saying that this whiskey is better than this whiskey. I think it just comes down to personal preference, like it is a lot in whiskey. So like I said, glass two was the winner. So then let's find out what glass two was. And that is gonna be A for alpha, which is That is going to be Eagle Rare. So it's a good thing it was over on that side. So Eagle Rare was today's winner. And let's make sure we got this second. I got this right. This is B, which is Redwood Empire Pipe Dream. It was pretty close. And I, I really wanted this to win. But when I was trying this to begin with, I thought that this might be the Eagle Rare just because of the amount of wood presence that was there. But the more and more I drank glass two, I thought that that was Eagle Rare just because of how oily the mouthful and just how balanced that it was. But for $33, $30, this is just fantastic value for money. And again, this rings around about the same price as well, about 35 to 40. If you can find it, it is allocated. So what's the takeaway here? Yes, Eagle Red did come up as the winner here, but if you can't find this allocated whiskey, which can rung, ring up sometimes in $60, $70, and you see this guy sitting on the shelf for 30 bucks, I would probably recommend buying this one instead because not only are you you're gonna have a really enjoyable experience from this whiskey, you're also supporting a smaller distillery as well, and they do some awesome stuff around forest conservation there in California as well. However, for today and today's episode, we asked the question, was Redwood Empire Pipe Dream good enough to beat out Eagle Red 10 in a blind? Ultimately, it fell a little short, but it was very, very close. So, as we drink through the world's whiskeys, one glass at a time, cheers. <laughs>